Mm, I'm rubbing my hands already because today we're making a very special recipe that is commonly referred to as the Northern style Boeuf Bourguignon. Yes, you know, the north of France and the south, they always fight with different recipes. So if you've made before the classic Boeuf Bourguignon from Burgundy, we've got the beef, you got all the ingredients, slow cooking red wine, it can get a bit old. So the north, they got their own version, slightly different, beef slow cooked with plenty of onions, some herbs, and instead of the wine, we have to use this. I've got my hands on one of those, the Chimay Grand Reserve, which is a Belgium dark ale. And that changes everything. We are so doing this, let's go. La carbonate flamande, the famous dish from the north, is actually not only from the north, but also from Belgium, the French-speaking part of Belgium. In France, because of the borders that we have with a lot of countries, you have these specialties that are kind of overflowing. Here, the use of beer is this example. Anything with cooking in France use usually Belgium beer. So these are the ingredients that you're gonna need. It's very simple in itself. Huh? You've got the slow cook with this is chuck steak, one of my favorite when it comes to slow cooking beef, because you got the nice layers of fat plus the lean meat, delicious. Onions, a bunch of herbs, so you got parsley, you got chives, tarragon, you can even use chervil, you get a bit of sugar, a bit of vinegar, a bit of capers, some toasted flowers, thyme and bay leaf, nothing out of the ordinary. But this is very important. You need to use first a Belgian beer, but really a dark beer. You can't use anything that is bitter. So I've been exploring other types of beer, but they could add a bitterness to your dish. You don't want to use a lager, you don't want to use a blonde beer. This is the only thing you need to remember. If you make this, you have to get your hands on a type of dark ale from Belgium. It doesn't have to be this one, this is an example you can get, the Chimay, and you can order it, it's pretty much across the world, so easy access to it, and it works really well. Now, let's do the mise en place. So for the mise en place, first thing first, the meat. I prefer to use a whole chunk of meat rather than steak because otherwise they're too thick. And here you need thin slices. So this is too much, you just need one kilo. And I've got some nice meaty bits here. There's a lot of fat on that side. So first what I'm gonna do is just to get rid of that and keep this for something else. Now one of the big difference there is between the carbonate flamand and the boeuf bourguignon is how the meat is cut. The boeuf bourguignon, the classic, is cubes. Okay, we're gonna make cubes of meat and here it's slices. Thickness, usually more than a centimeter, about half an inch. So I'm not gonna take a, you know, a measuring tape or anything like this, but all what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through and start to cut slices in there. You can ask your butcher to do it as well, and if you want, you can use another type of meat. You don't have to use this chuck steak. If you want, use any slow cook type of beef that you like. Now, once your meat has been sliced, as you can see, I've got my little uh, slices of, of beef here. The rest is very simple. The onions, thinly sliced, four of them. The herbs, thinly chopped. And remember, you can mix everything you want, so you can have more chive, more tarragon, more parsley, and that is gonna define a little bit the flavors you're gonna get. And all of the things there is just measuring. Measuring the sugar and the tablespoon of vinegar, etc., etc. And we've got the beer at the ready, and now we're ready to cook. So let's do this, and look what I have. The new Le Creuset Dutch oven. This is the oval shape that's gonna allow me to put much more things in. So the meat, we're gonna season with salt. And all what we're gonna have to do is to sear each piece of meat and brown it nicely on either side. So let's check if it's I think it's good enough. And you see the fact of having a bit more space, I'm gonna be able to put two or three things at a time. It's not bad. Right, so I've turned my meat and this is the color you want. You really want this nice, attractive kind of brown color. So don't be hesitant, use high heat. And I've used a tablespoon of grapeseed oil. That's got a very high kind of smoking point. So you can really, really sear this piece of meat. Now, as soon as the meat has been seared, uh, you put it on a tray like this, I'm going to put a foil over and immediately we're going to cook the onion using these caramelized juices. For the onion, very simple, you put a nudge of butter in there and everything in. We have to cook the onions really for 15 minutes before we can do everything. So we're going to use these juices to almost caramelize the onion. So a good 15 minutes, don't use a too high heat, we don't want to burn them. 
After five minutes in, the onions will start to render some water and this is where you can check your heat. If it's not enough heat, you can raise the heat, otherwise it's gonna take forever. Bit of salt and pepper on there and you continue to cook them. You're also gonna preheat your oven now at 150 degrees Celsius. After 15 minutes, you can see the onions are cooked. It starts to slightly color at the bottom. This is what we want, that slight caramelization. It's all about brown colors in here. And I'm gonna put everything back into my bowl here that I've got. Now this dish is made in a layering fashion. It's gonna be a layer of meat, layer of onions, layer of herbs, a bit like a lasagna kind of style. But before we do so, we need to actually use the flour. So this is something you can usually do before. So I'm gonna put all the meat back and I'm gonna mix it with the toasted flour so that it's all coated on all sides. So the advantage of using toasted flour is that you're gonna get this nice kind of coffee, nutty notes, and it's a bit brown and you don't have to worry. It's really gonna have that nice uh, consistency. You don't need some time to burn the flour. So when you make a boeuf bourguignon, you have to put this into the oven to toast the flour. But here, no. We're just gonna do that before with the toasted flour. And I love that technique. Once the flour is in, all what we're gonna do is to mix everything together and coat the meat with the flour. And we're gonna take half of it out and leave half of it in the pan. Now that pan is quite big, uh, but anyway, I've removed half of the meat, so I've got one layer of meat, and the name of the game here is layering. So you've got the meat, then we're gonna have a layer of uh, caramelized or semi-caramelized onion, and then we're gonna follow on with some herbs. So make sure it's all you know, at the same level kind of thing, and we're just gonna cover. Yummy, up. And then over that, we're gonna have some of the herbs. And so the amount of herbs you want, it's kind of up to you. And then we're gonna repeat the process so again, on top of that, you're gonna put more meat and more onions and more herbs and we keep on going. So you got the idea of it, so this is all done. You see this layering of flavors that we have and then we're just gonna have all of the vinegar on top. We're gonna sprinkle with the sugar and next we're gonna be adding the beer, of course. Let's open it. I think I was secretly waiting for that moment during the whole video, like, when are we opening the beer? Uh, it's like a champagne bottle, to be honest. I hope it's not gonna explode and I'm gonna... Ooh. Is it? <laughs> Woo! Ho, ho, ho! Oh, cheers! Let me try this first. Ah, oh, that is a good old Belgium beer. I'm not an expert on beer, and I don't know what is the difference if it's made with malt or whatever. And by the way, I've made a little interview Q&A with these guys at uh, Beer Brackets YouTube channel. Links in the video description. We had a beer, actually, because they specialize in beer, and we're talking about it and about the channel if you're interested to see. But hey, guys, if you're watching this, let me. Tasting note. Mm. Ah, I've got so little knowledge on beer. It's just good. It's just like a brown, it's very, I think it's got very that kind of sugary, uh, caramelly kind of taste. Really caramelly, it's absolutely not bitter. And that's gonna go perfectly with the meat. Oh, this port is the wrong way, we need 400 ml. Look how dark that is, I have to wait for that foam to disappear and it's time to have another zip. Mm. It's actually very good. I forgot, I miss these Belgian beers. Oh, that, that caramel taste. Well, anyway, back to the recipe. I was getting carried away here. So I forgot the other time and the bay leaf on top and then we're gonna slowly, but surely, put the beer in there. Now for the final touches, you're gonna take all of ju the juices huh, for the meat that was uh, in the tray. So every, and we're not gonna lose any of the flavors. And it says actually you have to top up with water. I'm a bit sad about that. Uh, just to barely cover uh, the meat here. Now, a bit like a boeuf bourguignon, as you can see. So not too much water, but you can't be just beer. Okay, so whatever you need, and it doesn't matter how much you make, just make sure it kind of just, I'm not gonna go too high, I, don't want, I want something like, I want to keep it tight, okay? And now it's time to cook this into the oven. So I'm gonna put the lid on, in the oven, 150 degrees, and that has to cook until the meat falls apart. Two, uh, two and a half hours, three hours, I will tell you exactly how long time it took me and I'm gonna put this in the oven, and in the meantime, enjoy some of that uh, leftover beer there. I hope I'm not done drunk by the end. And here we are, so this is three hours later. I'm gonna remove the lid. And this is what we have. And the carbonate flamande, totally reduced, and quite fatty, I mean, actually, 
it really feels like I'm gonna grow a double chin on there. And what you have here, it's like a comfy, pff, look at this, how it's falling apart. A comfy of beef bathing in caramelized onion and beer, um, if you're into that sort of things. Now, what I feel like is like I've been really ambushed by a bunch of Belgian monks in the Abbey. Do you want to try some of our beers? And boom, drunk. So when you wait for three hours, be careful not to drink too much of that bloody beer because I didn't see it was like, like it says it was about 9% alcohol, which is quite strong. So I'm going to remove the time here. And yeah, that's the dish. This is how it's meant to be. So really reduce. You get a nice kind of juice. It's quite fatty, but the most important, you want to have that brown color and you want to have the caramelized onion. And now, of course, we're going to be able to taste. Okay, so let's stir this. I'm gonna, just going to try to grab a chunk of this here. Uh, there's a, a bit of a chunk of meat here. I'm going to try to get some caramelized onion, a little bit on there, okay. What you're going to be pairing this, uh, the usual suspects, so you've got like potatoes, mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, sauté potatoes, rice, or pasta. Let's zoom in. Okay, so here we are. So this is the northern style Boeuf Bourguignon, eh, the, the competition. Uh, of course, like the Boeuf Bourguignon, there are some final touches. This is meant to be served. I'm not going to use my hand here, but um, with capers on the top to cut through that fat because it's quite fatty. And also, you're going to add a tiny bit of the herbs and if you want, uh, salt and pepper. Yeah, you could add some beer actually in the dish before you serve if you want to, but you know what? For me, I'm just going to... So what we're going to check here? The meat. You see? So that's falling apart. Oh, there's no question. This is, like a, this is like confit meat after three hours. And let's try it. We have a bit of the um, capers and herbs and onions. Mm. You know, that's already quite intense. Mm. You know what, it's actually... You, you may think it's a kind of a bourguignon in a way, you know? It's, it's, you've got the same kind of beef, like slow cook, but capers and herbs, but you got that caramelized taste from the beer, again, the, the Belgian beer, you know, like the, the monks. Mm. And with the capers, it's great. I mean, it's, this is so refreshing. You know, like the Bourguignon is always the same, like, oh, the, you know, the red wine and stuff. But this has got a really, a nice kind of semi-sweet kind of taste. So you've got the beef, you've got the fatty taste. Uh, in the best, a lot of fat, a lot of fat. And you got the capers and the herbs. And wow, you know, with the caramelized onion, if you serve this with pasta or potatoes or anything, a great winter dish. Now, this was an amazing experience. The Carbonate Flamand, the answer to the French Bourguignon and from the South, the Burgundy style. This is so refreshing. You know, you've got the beef, the capers, the herbs. It tastes different. And with that beer, it is really, really great. You, know, you really need to try this. So if you make that recipe, any question, use the comment section. If you also make a picture of it, I use the hashtag MyFrenchDish on Instagram. And if you want to support us, as always, uh, you've got Patreon or the culinary school where you can learn all these little techniques that are so important. And I'm learning more and more when I'm cooking, even things like this using my new pot. And it is always such a pleasure to discover new flavor. It's an adventure. And that's what it all matters at the end, you know? It's all good. It's just food. Okay. But anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you all next week for another beautiful French cooking video. See you all. Take care all. Bye bye.